Showtime! Buffs. There's something almost all of us fantasize about and something that Hoyoverse doesn't like to do. They pretty much only happen in beta, and then after that, a character is on their own, left to their own devices, whether they're good or not. We see minor changes, but nothing really substantial. And honestly, I don't really care because I don't think a lot of characters need major changes. Most of the times I just want little minor tweaks. And that's what this list is going to be. A list of very minor wishes for a lot of characters. Some may be a little bit bigger, but for the most part, I just want them to be more fun because I think a lot of characters are in a solid place where they can actually do the teeny tiny amount of endgame content we have, that being the Spiral Abyss. So if you have ideas for a single big change you would like to see for a favorite character of yours or multiple, you know, share them in the comments below because this is fun to talk about. Do you know why Albedo's pondering like this? It's because he's wondering what went wrong in his life to end up with an attack scaling burst and a defense scaling skill. That's all I want. I just want his burst to do defense damage. This number, but in defense, because that's a respectable number for a geo burst to be doing. Much like a couple other characters, I already talked about Amber in a previous video, and I'm just gonna mention the change I want the most here, and that is that I want her C2 baked into her actual kit. Will it save Amber? Oh god, no, but it will make her more fun because honestly, shooting Bear and Bunny to make it explode for bonus damage is something that I just thought it would have done when I first started this game. I think it'd be a cool little buff that would make Amber a lot more fun for newer players and even older players who are still using her or want to use her. I want Barbara's skill to be much bigger. I'm talking much, much bigger. This would at least give Barbara as like a mobile passive hydro application. Since Kokomi has to put her jellyfish on the ground, Barbara would kind of be like a moving Kokomi jellyfish, just with a prettier skill effect. One thing I have wanted for a long, long, long time is for a main DPS Beto to be more viable. One of the best ways to go about this would just be to give her an Electro Infusion, and I think the best way to do that is whenever she activates a perfect counter. We already do get a little bit of Electro Damage bonus when it happens, but an Electro Infusion, maybe with a bonus on top of that, would be a lot better. Until then, waiting for Electro Chung in. Bennett certainly does not need any help, but what I would like is for his skill to be a little bit more of an actual thing rather than a little stick you whack him with and get some energy out of. And what I really want is for the final explosion for the fully charged version to be way bigger, for it to actually be a big AoE explosion. Chongyun can be a rather niche character. I mean, not a lot of people want to infuse other characters with cryo. But when I do, I want that to be 100% of the time and not have that awkward downtime that it has now. It's not a particularly powerful thing to do, so I don't think it's a big ask to want it to be up 100% of the time. Deluxe A1 passive is basically the worst in the game, or tied with any one that would contend with the worst. Charge attacks for claymores just suck. Unless you got a special one, you don't use it. Now I don't want to remove it or make it something that is entirely different. I just want it to be way better. I think it should reduce the startup time significantly, increase the damage, maybe increase the duration even further so you don't gotta do that stupid map trick. Much of his kit, including his constellations, already discourage you from charge attacking and instead just auto attacking, weaving, and skills that this would have to be significantly stronger to ever warrant you actually using your charge attack. And well, that's what I want. I would love it if they took Diona C4, which reduces the charge time of her charge shots while she's standing in her burst, and also add some HP scaling onto it. I absolutely love the idea of this constellation, especially for Diona. I just want it to be a little bit better and actually scale with her technically main stat. I have but a single wish for Eula, and that is for the AoE range of her burst to match the raw physical destruction it brings upon things. Don't get me wrong, it's not a small burst, but I, I just want it to be absolutely massive. I could say I just want iframes on her burst here, but honestly, I don't really care. But I think it would be cool if the Oz you got from the burst was actually an empowered Oz. If it just did more damage or something. My wish for Ganyu isn't really for Ganyu. It kind of affects every bow character who wants to use charge attacks. I just want the aimed mode to not have the delay between charge shots. It's not really a big deal on PC and mobile kind of just does it anyway, but I know for controllers it can kind of suck and I don't really want to do it on PC anyway. Simple characters to build are a blessing and a curse. Goro is one that is very simple to build because defense only affects his own personal damage, which is really low anyway. I would like it if his buff at least scaled a little bit off defense. Like I don't want it to be weaker and then scale off defense. I have to get where it is now, 
I would just like it to go a little further beyond where it is now with the help of defense and not base defense because that's the same problem all over again. Hu Tao is a little tough, but I kind of like how her A1 actually somewhat encourages double DPS. I know it buffs supports as well, but I would like it if somehow it encouraged double DPS. That's a really hard thing to do without increasing support DPS too, but I don't know, they could find a way. Now I bet your ass you know what I want for Ito in terms of buffs. I want him to get buff. This will never be forgiven and it will never be forgotten. Fix this man. Do not leave him like a twig. There's one change that I've always wanted for Jean, and that is related to her constellation too. I love her C2, but what I hate about it is that you need to absorb particles with Jean. I've always thought it would feel a whole lot better if it was just when you use the skill, because there's almost never a time where you swap to Jean and you don't use her skill. However, it is very common for me to swap to her and never absorb any particles on her. See this, see this part of Kaya's A1 right here? I would, I would just change that to his burst. It'd be cool if it affected the active character and not just Kaya, but you know, nice either way. Kaya would either become some kind of like little semi life stealing tank or he'd become some kind of little pseudo healer. I'm gonna be completely honest, what I would do to Kazuha would actually be a nerf for a lot of people. I would just like it if the C6 and the C2 switched places because the C6 looks kind of just like fun and I want to use it without having to spend like $2,000. Really though, I just can't think of anything better. Kazuha is perfect. The problems Kaching has unfortunately cannot be fixed in one single stroke, but I think the best start would just be reducing the cost of her charge attack. She is one of few characters who unfortunately fights with what is essentially a mana bar, but unlike someone like Hu Tao, she does not drop her target dead in about 4 seconds. So when she runs out of stamina, she can't dodge, she can't do much damage, and she has to wait. It just sucks. Once upon a time, and I mean a long ass time ago, I think Klee's burst lasting off field might have been a little bit too strong for her considering she was a very good character. But now she's fallen very far behind and I think it's time that her burst could actually be more of a support burst and it wouldn't be broken at all. It might honestly not be useful, but hell, it would be fun. The general usability of Kokomyo would go up quite a bit if we could just replace her ability just like we do with another skill effect like Oz. It's unfortunate when an enemy moves out of the range of the jellyfish because we are encouraged to refresh its duration with our burst and keep it up on the field in the place we put it in. Lisa can already hold her skill a little bit longer than you actually need to, and right now the main purpose of that is to just let an enemy walk into the range of it that may be walked out or hasn't gotten in yet. It would be a cool thing to add damage reduction to her skill while she's holding it, and also absorb some of the pre-mitigation damage you take and add it to the damage of her skill. Another change to a 5 stars constellation here, because Mona has two constellations that gear her towards a pseudo on-field main DPS. Her C2 is not only gated by a low RNG, but also a cooldown. I feel like they could reduce this cooldown drastically to like two seconds, and it would still not be that crazy, but it would be a hell of a lot more fun than it is at present. I would just love it if Ning Wong's projectiles would stop destroying themselves on walls. Honestly, this isn't a problem that comes up a lot, but when it does, it's annoying as hell. Noelle lives and dies on her burst, so it would be great if she could just generate her own energy particles, whether it be from actually generating her shield or with the explosion that the C2 offers. I mean, if they want to do both, that's fantastic. I don't expect it, but it would be nice if just one of them did it. Chi Chi's skill just needs to be generating some energy particles. It's a problem that unfortunately Barbara, Noelle, and Chi Chi all suffer from, but I feel like Chi Chi is possibly the biggest victim. Her skill already ticks for damage regularly, and that is, we, we already have abilities like this that generate energy, so this should too. Much like most new polearm users, Raiden's got some badass attacks, and no reason to use them. So what I want is for when you hit an enemy with her skill, it infuses just Raiden's attacks with Electro, not the characters that she will be buffing with this. That way, it doesn't interfere with anything we already have, but just adds some new functionality to specifically her herself. This is quite possibly my favorite idea on this entire list, and it sounds the most fun, and I wish, I so wish this would happen. Much like how Xiao gets increased jumping ability when he's active in his burst, I wish Razor would get drastically increased movement speed. I'm talking like up to 50%. I want him to run around fast like a wolf, I guess. I think it makes total sense. It fits him thematically, and it would help him in the meta quite a bit. It would get him around to smaller targets a lot faster. 
Kind of like Ganyu, my idea for Rosari is more of a system change. I love her passive to be able to run faster at night, but what I hate is changing the time. I would love it if we could actually just lock in a time of day, if we could just say, I always want it to be nighttime, I always want it to be daytime. Not only would this benefit Rosaria's passive greatly because it would always be active, but it'd also be cool for going around taking screenshots and stuff, because it's annoying when the time of day changes on you, and now all of a sudden you have to change it again. Simple request for Sarah, I just want the little ambush that gives you the attack buff to be bigger, the AoE to be bigger. I'm fine with the duration, I just want it to be a little bit easier to get, especially for certain characters. Please, for the love of God, just make it so that she does not scare off all the crystal flies after she gets one. Seriously, almost just defeats the purpose of her passive. Like, it's really dumb. This is another one of those characters that I just don't really have any problems with, but I would like it if the held skill came out a little bit quicker, but that's more of a held skill issue in general because they're all given the startup delay where you're given an opportunity to cancel it if you want to change your mind. But honestly, like it's such a small window, who even cares? I'm definitely not the first person who wished Sucrose's burst did not blow everything away, but that's what I want. We got characters like Poor Child who can't reach Venti's burst and Sucrose's burst kind of has anti-synergy. So uh, that makes it unfortunate. More HP scaling from Toma's kit, literally anywhere. I don't care where it is. I don't care if it is the damage over time from the burst when you attack. I don't care if it's the initial hit. I don't care if it's the shield's initial hit. I don't care if it's on his auto attacks, just somewhere besides the shield. Give this poor boy some more HP scaling. Switching elements away from a statue, whether it be in combat or out of combat. Obviously, I would prefer in combat because that'd make them a one hell of an interesting character. I think you could balance in combat element switching just by adding a cooldown or something. And honestly, all the travelers are individually kind of weak overall. So switching would actually probably be fine. My idea for Venti is basically just plagiarizing off of Kazuha. I think it would be awesome if his held skill gave him a special plunge attack, especially considering every bow plunge sucks ass anyway. Doesn't have to suck enemies in, just do some damage. Another simple change, I just want Guava's AoE to be bigger, just a big old cone. It'd probably be more useful if it was longer because it's really easy for him to get out range, but you know, I, I would take either. And I'd probably go a longer. It might not be something feasible to do within the game easily, but I would sure love it if Zhao actually sucked enemies in rather than knocking them away so that he couldn't hit them anymore, specifically with these stupid Vishaps. Pants. Okay, I'm kidding, but Xingqiu is like perfect. He does not need anything except pants. Just like Albedo, what she really needs is just some defense scaling on her burst. If she could have both a decent shield and a strong burst, she'd be such a better unit. And a lot of people would use her more often. This might be one of the most basic, just meta-oriented buffs I propose, but I would just like if the totems had more attack speed. I know that just straight increases the damage she does, but it also increases the amount of Electro she would spread and how quickly she can spread it to different targets, which I think would just make Yei Miko not only better, but a lot more fun as well and viable in all playstyles, whether she's just straight damage or she's trying to build elemental mastery to spread reactions. Once upon a time, Yanfei's shield from her C4 used to be a lot stronger, but it got nerfed before we ever got to actually get it ourselves. And I think it's time to revert that change and make it so her C4 actually has a pretty meaty shield. I've said it before and I'll say it again, her burst needs some buffs, particularly in the cooldown of how often it can be triggered. She can't trigger herself, though I think it's totally reasonable if the cooldown is drastically reduced. I already think it's a little bit odd how Yunjin's fourth attack doesn't hit more times. To me, it looks like it hits well, more than twice. She's all about buffing other attackers who attack multiple times and fast, so why shouldn't she be the queen of that herself? I would make that fourth attack hit at least three to four times, and then also add a multi-hit to the final attack, just making her an absolute blender. Now for Zhongli, I just want his pillar AoE to be a little bit bigger. Now this could be perceived as kind of a nerf because he might start interfering with more reactions than he does now, but for anyone who uses Tenacity to the middle left, or wishes to build him as more of like a structure build, it would be a great help. I would love for Ayaka's charge attacks to be more like Kaching's in terms of how fast you can dish them out, even if it does mean she's gonna rip through her stamina. 
We've had a short time with Hayato so far, but in that time, I really wanted to have a special dash with him while his skill is active. Like, just imagine if we could do his, like, initial dash when you first activate a skill, but you could do it all the time and a little bit further and a little bit quicker because I feel like his burst or his skill is all about speed and the regular dash just, it doesn't do it for me. Child doesn't leave me wanting for much, but I do want a plunge attack. I mean, there are times where it would be helpful, and if you ever get kidnapped by Albedo's elevator, it's nice to at least get something out of it. And Aloy, what we've all always been asking for, just remove the internal cooldown from her skill, the stupid limiter that stops her ability from functioning the way it should with what should probably be her intended best synergy. That is all for now. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe because YouTube loves that stuff and so do I because what is not to love? If you want to support me directly, I have a Patreon, YouTube membership, all that stuff. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.